Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you. We're glad you are with us, and we hope that you're ready for study God's Word again tonight, or continue to study God's Word. Uh, had some interesting callers uh, called in on Kayla's program, and uh, I don't know. I, I might want to claim that $1,000. Uh, I, I told Caleb, I said, I know exactly where the Baptist church is in the Bible. I may be getting ahead of my lesson here. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to save it. I know where the Baptist church is in the Bible, and I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit later. But tonight, we'll put our content information up here. Uh, word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276 340 2653. how you can reach me. And uh, if you want to study God's Word, we'll be glad to do that. We meet at 250 the Boulevard on uh, Sundays and Thursdays. Sundays at 9 and 10 a.m., Thursdays at 7 p.m. And of course, uh, this program comes on. Thursday nights at nine at nine o'clock, and uh, we'd be glad to study with you anytime. Of course, there's always uh, assembly assembly times at on uh, in Martinsville, 823 Starling Avenue, on Wednesday nights, Sundays and Wednesday nights, and uh, Tuesday nights in Danville, Sunday mornings and, and uh, Tuesday nights in Danville, at uh, 120 American Legion. So, hope that you will come out and visit with them as well. Anytime you uh, have a chance to do that very thing tonight, tonight we're going to be talking about the right to remain silent. You know, sometimes uh, individuals, they say things that later will come back, they will come back and regret. I know if, you, if you've been married at all, you know that's true. I mean, how many times have you said something and it's like, whoops, and said that. But oftentimes, you know, we, we're guilty of putting our foot in our mouth and not really thinking about it. But especially, it's especially true, friends, when it comes to religion. It's especially true when it comes to dealing with God or dealing with what the Bible says. Oftentimes what people do is they want to give their opinions or their thoughts or ideas and it's going to come back to bite you. As a matter of fact, Jesus on one occasion actually told a parable about a man who said that very thing. In Luke 19, in Luke 19 and verse 11, and I'm going to put this up here so we can read the whole context here, but in Luke 19 and verse 11, Listen to uh, the parable that Jesus puts forth. And as they spake these things, and as, as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And he said, unto the, and he said therefore, a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants to deliver them ten pounds and he said unto them occupy till I come but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us and it came to pass that he was returned having received the kingdom then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given uh, to whom he had given uh, money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading notice verse 16 then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good uh, servant, because thou hast been faithful in a little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise unto him, thou also uh, over five cities. And uh, another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, and hast taken, thou hast taken up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst uh, not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I had laid not down, and... Uh, Sorry, and reaping that I did not uh, sow. Wherefore thou thou gavest, wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury or with interest. And so here's the point. Here's the point. What the man says. The man says he was given money. He was given charge uh, of some in, of of some money, and instead of putting it in the bank and letting it draw interest, he didn't do anything with it. 
But when he's come to give an account of what he's doing, notice, the Lord said, out of thine own mouth I will judge thee, because you said, I know you're an austere man, I know that you, re you reap what you didn't sow, you take up what you didn't lay down, I know that you are a man that's, that is in the business of increasing his goods and wealth, and here you do, what do you do with it? You take this, this pound that you have, and you don't even have enough sense to put it in the bank and get a little interest on it. Out of your own mouth will I judge you. Friends, this <clears throat> is exactly what we're talking about when it comes to religion. A lot of people will say things, and that's going to come back to judge them. Your own words will judge you. Friends, take note of this. When you start talking about the Bible and you start talking about what God wants or what you want or what you think or what you feel or what you believe, and then you don't stop and consider that every word that you say is going to be held accountable, you're going to be held accountable for it, your own words are going to judge you. Listen to what Jesus said in, in Matthew 12, verse 36. Matthew 12, 36. He said, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. There's a reason why we want to be very careful about what we say. And there was, we want to be very careful about what we teach. James says, Be not many masters, know ye shall receive a greater condemnation. The teachers are the ones that are going to receive the greater condemnation. But friends, that doesn't excuse you who's sitting there in the pew listening to them and regurgitating what you hear them say. That's not going to excuse you because you're simply sitting there simply taking it in and regurgitating it. I was, I was sitting right over there at the news desk listening to some of these calls come in and it was just baffling to me when uh, the caller comes in and says, well, it's not December 25th, it's January 7th. I'm thinking, What? What's the difference in January 7th? Because 7 is, is the Lord's number. Well, what about February 7th? Or March 7th? Or April 7th? Or May 7th? Or June? Or July? October, June, July, August, September, October, November. Why does it have, or December? I mean, if January 7th, why not December 7th? You know? See, so here we're talking about people just regurgitating, saying things, and they don't have any idea what they're really saying. They're just talking. Well, friends, out of your own mouth, you're going you're gonna to be judged. Now, over the, over the years, individuals have called in and they've made statements, and I just thought it was amazing that, you know what? These are things that these people, all of them, are saying about themselves, or they're making statements that, I don't think they even hear what they're saying half the time. They don't even hear themselves saying some of these things, and that's what we're going to look at tonight. Talking about your own words, out of your own mouth, out of thine own mouth, this is what people are saying. Listen to what this man says. Now, I know we've played this uh, before, but listen to what these people say, and, it's, and you just have to go, did you even hear what you just said? Listen to what he says. Turned over and watching you program a little bit, and uh, you come know, at all these denominations and things. Yes, sir. We are not done. We know that denominations are not in the Bible. The churches were named by our forefathers, as far as Baptists or whatever you want to call different churches. I didn't say they were wrong. I just said, well, are you in we one? know that they are not in the Bible. Are you in one? Don't keep saying that. Well, these denominations are not in the are, Bible. Are you we in know a, that. Are you in a denomination? Our fathers named them, and that's why Sir. they got these names. We know they're well, not in okay. the Bible. Okay. Now, we're not dumb. We're not dumb. We know they're not in the Bible. Our fathers named them, but we're going to be in them. Do you, do you listen to what you're saying? Hear what you're saying? Out of your own mouth, you're saying, we're not dumb. We know they're not in the Bible. But you're going to be in it anyway. 
We're not dumb, friends. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to. Argue, I may have to differ with with the caller. I don't know. It may be maybe guys like that are gonna make it to heaven on a baby ticket. I don't know. When people say we're not dumb, we know they're not in the Bible. But then they turn around and say, "But and then we're gonna defend them, friends. If it's not in the Bible, why would you defend it?" If it's not in the Bible, why would you even say? Why would you even try to give a defense for it? As a, as a reason why you're in a church, we know our fathers named it. Well, friends, if you're in a, in a church that's not in the Bible, and you know it's not in the Bible, and you know it wasn't named by God, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's dumb. That's dumb. That's not smart at all. Now, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just saying, friends, you need to stop and consider. It is highly irresponsible for you to say, I know that it's the case, but I'm going to do it anyway. Listen, in 2 Peter 3 and verse 5, 2 Peter 3 and verse 5, listen to what Peter said. He said, uh, let's back up to verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now that's what they're saying. Every, everything's the same. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. You know what I'm saying? They're willfully ignorant. They're willingly ignorant of the fact that God had destroyed the world with the flood. Willfully ignorant. That means they know it. They're just not going to admit it. They know it. They're just not going to say it. They just, they just cannot bring themselves to say, you know what? God made a promise to destroy the world once. And then he's going to, and he did it. So if he makes a promise to destroy the world again, it's going to happen. No. Willfully ignorant. Willfully ignorant. That's what we're talking about, friends. Out of your own mouth, you're saying, it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. You, you are just so smart. You're so wise that you're smarter than God. In Romans 1, verse 28, Paul said, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. They don't want to hear God's word. They don't want to retain God in their knowledge. They don't want to know about God. Friends, when you start saying, well, we know it's not in the Bible. We're not dumb. Well, what are you then? You can't be smart. How smart is it to say it doesn't matter what church you're in? What church you're in? How smart is it to say we know the church I'm, I know the church I'm in is not in the Bible, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in it anyway. Well, friends, I don't know. I wouldn't call that smart then. Proverbs seventeen six. Proverbs seventeen sixteen. I'm sorry. Proverbs seventeen sixteen. Wherefore is there price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom? seeing he hath no heart to it. Wherefore is there the price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he has no heart to it? Why would you give him money? Why, why does he have money to buy wisdom when he's not even want it? See? It's like, why do, you, why, do you put, why do you put money in someone's hand to buy something knowing that they're not going to buy it? It's like sometimes people come and knock on the door and they say, hey, I'd like some, uh, can, I, can you give some cash for some gasoline? Friends, I don't give cash for gasoline. I, I'll just tell you right now. You, you come to the church building and you come see me on the street, whatever, and you want to give some cash, you need some gas to get to Greensboro, whatever, uh-uh. I don't, I don't give you cash. I'm not going to give you cash. Now, if I think if you got your story good enough, I may go down to the gas station and pump some gas for you. But I'm not giving you cash. You know why? Because too many people say, well, you know what? I got some gas money, but you know what? I think I'm going to go buy me a big old, you know, uh, malt liquor or something. You know, what, what's the bull? I can't remember. Yes. Yeah. 
No, you know, I'm not give you. I'm not give you money. Why? Because I think I'd be a fool then. I don't know why I'd give you money. And why does individuals then turn around and say, "Well, I've got the Bible." They want to tout, "Well, we've got the Bible. We've got the Bible." Well, you don't use it. <laughs> what good is it? What good is it doing you? Well, to me, it's just out of your own mouth. Out of your own mouth. That's what's going to judge you. See, friends. One day you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he's going to say, well, sir, is there a reason why you were in this church? Oh, yeah, we're not dumb. Yeah, you're pretty dumb. Because I said there's one church in the Bible. I said there's one church you have to be a member of. There's one church that Christ died for and you want to tell me you're not dumb. Well, okay. And what about this? Out of your own mouth. Let's just keep up with the theme here. When, a, when an individual says that they're not in the Lord's church. I'll take another call. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. It's my first time calling you. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm a Baptist. I was raised in a church, in a Baptist church. Mm-hmm. I was born raised in a Baptist church. Why are you in the Baptist church if you can't find in the Bible? I was raised in the Baptist church. Well, can you find it in the Bible? I don't to find the Bible. I believe in the Bible, but I, well, I was raised in the church. Well, why would you be in a church that you can't find in God's Word? If God didn't think enough of it to, to, to talk about it, why would you want to be a, a member of it? I'm a member of the Baptist church. I think I just cut cut that off on accident. Try take another call. Let me try again. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. It's my first time calling you. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm a Baptist. I was raised in a church in a Baptist church. Mm-hmm. I was born and raised in a Baptist. Why are you in the Baptist church if you can't find it in the Bible? I was raised in the Baptist church. Well, can you find it in the Bible? I don't have to find the Bible. I believe in the Bible, but I, don't. Well, I was raised in the church. Well, why would you be in a church that you can't find in God's Word? If God didn't think enough of it to, to, to talk about it, why would you want to be a, a member of it? I'm a member of the Baptist church. You are? Yes. Then why? That's what I'm asking. Why are you a member of the Baptist church if God never said anything about being a member of the Baptist church? What church you belong? What you know, part of your church is? Well, I don't have a church. We are a Christian church or a Baptist church or a Holy church. I, I don't have a church. I'm a member of the Lord's church. Well, I'm a member of the Baptist church. Well, I'm a member of the Lord's church. You see, you got two different comments. I'm you know, the Lord's church. I'm a Baptist. You see, you got two different comments. I'm you know, the Lord's church. I'm a Baptist. I'm you know, the Lord's church. I'm a Baptist. <clears throat> now, friends, I, I don't know who the caller is. Some of them have um, mixed feelings about uh, this caller. Uh, it may be that uh, they were just being very, very honest because of uh, maybe their, their their mental state. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't want to make really harsh judgments about the caller other than the fact that it is very, very interesting to me that someone will say, well, I'm not in the Lord's church, but I'm, not, I'm in the Baptist church. Well, friends, that's, that's true. Now, if you know these things, doesn't it trouble you to say it knowing that in the end, one day you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to have to tell the Lord, well, I knew I was not in your church. I was just in a man-made church. Baptist church, holiness church, Methodist church. No, none of those are the Lord's church. My friends, out of your own mouth, is that is that not trouble you? I, I, I want you to really consider when we say a thousand dollars to find a Baptist church in the Bible, friends, that's really not a uh, an empty challenge. It's really designed to spur you to look for it. I remember one time we was door knocking. I believe it was in Danville, and uh, knocked on a lady's door and found out she's a member of the Baptist church. And I said, "Well, we're, we've been offering a thousand dollars. Anybody find the Baptist church?" 
She said, I, I, you know, I never have thought about it, but I don't believe I've ever heard it called the Baptist Church in the Bible. I said, well, it's a pretty good reason to look for it, isn't it? A thousand dollars? She said, yeah. Now, I don't know if she ever, you know, found it or not, but my point is, why not take the challenge at least? It's not in there. It's not in there. That's uh, We're so confident it's not in there, that's why we're saying $1,000. And that's why somebody will call and say, well, I'll double that. Well, I tell you what, I'll put a million on, on the line. The Baptist church is not in the Bible. And the reason why is because God didn't talk about it. He didn't put it in there. But when someone says, well, I know, I know I'm in the, I'm in the, the Baptist church and you're in the Lord's church. Friends, I want you to be in the Lord's church. I want you to be a part of the Lord's church. Here's why. Because the Lord's church is his body and his body is what he's going to save. And his body is going to save. He's what he's going to save. Ephesians 1 and verse 22. He's the, uh, he put all, he'd be the head over all things to the church which is his body. The church is his body. There's only one body. Ephesians 4 and verse 4. There's one body. And it's the one that he's going to save. Ephesians, 1, uh, Ephesians 5, 23. The husband's head of the wife, even as Christ said to the church, and he's the savior of the body. Now, I want you to be a part of the body that Christ is going to save. I want you to be a part of the body that Christ is the savior of. So it ought to stop. You ought to stop and say, you know, well, if I am saying the church I'm in is not the Lord's church, I need to get out of the out of that church. That's exactly right. But out of your own mouth, it's going to judge you. If you stay there, out of your own mouth, you're going to be judged. Out of your own mouth, you're going to, have to say, well, I said it. I'm I'm in I'm in a church that's not the Lord's church. Okay, if you can if you can live with it now, be prepared to live with it for eternity. Let's do one more here. Here's one more. Here's the caller that makes a statement about the Bible and the Baptist church. My point being, you knock too many religions. I knock too many of them? Which Everybody, I'm a Baptist. That, that, that's that's what I was brought up in a Baptist church. Why? It, Why are you in it now? Huh? Why are you in it now? Why ain't in it now? Yeah. I, I am a Baptist. I've always been a Baptist. I know. I'm saying why? Are you a Baptist why? now because you've always been a Baptist? Is that your reason? And my and my reason what? I said. Is the reason you're in the Baptist church now because you've always been a Baptist? I mean, is that is that your reasoning? No, I was brought up to, to believe in God and, and God's grace is just sufficient. But, but, sir, you don't read about the Baptist church in this book. I'm not talking about the Baptist church. I'm talking about the, 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 the book you're holding up there. Yeah. That same book is in, in, in the Baptist church. No, it's not. I, it, the book may be in the Baptist church, but the Baptist church ain't in the book. I just said that same book is in the Baptist church, and, it, it, and it's the Bible. I know, I know the book is in the Baptist church, but the Baptist church is not in the book. Well, they, 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 we believe this. We believe we. I believe in God, just like any, any Christian believes in God. Okay, sir. Here's the thing, though. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. If you have faith that the Baptist church is okay, show it to me in the word of God. All right, my friends, that's, that's pretty simple. Now here's a message. Well, the Bible that you're holding up, it's in the Baptist church. Friends, this Bible, the King James Bible, is in a lot of churches. It's in a lot of man-made churches. It's in the Methodist church. It's in the Lutheran church. It's in the Presbyterian church. It's in the Baptist church. It's in the Pentecostal Holiness church. But none of those churches are in the Bible. That's the point. Out of your own mouth, you're saying, well, that Bible is in all these churches. 
Friends, I would be, I would be so scared to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and say, well, Lord, we had your word. We had your word sitting right up there on the pew. Yeah, the preacher, he held it up every Sunday. It's a shame he never read it. It's a shame he never found the church that we were in in the Bible. But yeah, we had it. We're off going with the argument of, I never had your word. You'd be better off going with, I never had a Bible. You'd be better off going, I never even saw a Bible. I never even heard about a Bible. Then to say that we had a Bible and that it was in these man-made churches, but you never stopped to examine it to find out if the church you were in was in the book. Oh yeah, the book's in the church, but the church is not in the book. Now, when you're talking about Finding the church that you're in, friends. Listen, the caller called in on Caleb's program when he was talking about the, the Baptist church and Caleb said, well, find the Baptist church in the Bible. I'll tell you what the Baptist church in the Bible is. It's right after that verse that says Jesus was born on December 25th or January 7th. You find that verse, you should find December 25th in the Bible, and I'll show you the Baptist church in the Bible. It's right after it. You on the word from the Lord? Hello? You on the air? Yes. Hello? Turn your TV down. You're on the air. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? All right. He can't hear me again. Uh -huh. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. All right. You're on the air. Yes, I like. I was just watching your program on uh, TV. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking. Um, well, hello. I don't know, Mama. Phone's not. All right, call back. Call back a little bit later. I think it's your phone, sir. Call back a little bit later. So, but here's the thing, friends. Would it wouldn't it be troubling for you? Isn't it troubling for you to say that? Well, I mean, people come all the time. What Bible are you using? I'm using the King James Bible. I'm using the King James version of the Bible. And. Everybody says, oh yeah, that's, 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 that's the accurate one. That's the one to use. That's the one that our preacher uses. Okay? But out of your own mouth, you're going to be judged because you're saying that you have a Bible, the inspired Word of God, and yet you aren't looking at it to see if what you're believing isn't really in there. You're on the Word from the Lord. Turn your TV down. All right. Um, we were having to discuss me and a couple of the people, and I told them that I heard a uh, holy preacher said that when you die, you do not supposed to take that body back inside of a church, you know, to be seen and stuff. And when you die, you're supposed to leave like... Uh, well, you got the body like Macalon or Johnson and take it on to the to, to the cemetery. And a couple of people said, no, you can take that body back. I was not if it's the Holy Church. Well, you're talking I, about I taking it into a... Are, are you talking about, in, talking about taking it... You're not supposed to take that body back to... Okay. Inside a Holy Church. Okay. It's a church. It's a church. Okay. Can it's you hear me? Jesus. All right, let's talk. Let's talk. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. You're talking about taking a body back inside a church building? Yeah. All right. Well, you, well I don't know what... All right. Let me, let, let, let's let's talk. Wait a, minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's talk. Number one, the church is not the building. So you can't take a dead person okay. back inside the church because the church is actually the people. And it doesn't... And it, doesn't wait, it doesn't really matter about funerals or whatever. All right? It doesn't really matter. So all that... 
It's just because not not even worth talking about. I, I heard uh, the, the call, call, call. I heard a couple of Baptist preachers say, "Well, it doesn't make no difference." But I heard the holy preachers say that serve Jesus Christ. Well, what's, say, a, what's a holy preacher? It does make a what's a holy preacher? The holy, I mean, one that say they really serve in Jesus Christ. Well, what what, what is that? Christ. What is that? What is a, what is one that's really serving Jesus Christ? Is, is he a yeah. particular denomination or whatever or what? Like you, like you. <laughs> well, you know what I'm, saying? I, I'm just saying though, if if you're if you're talking about someone that's giving you the Bible, the Bible doesn't say anything about funerals or dead bodies like that. Jesus said, "Let the dead bury the dead." So, you know, once once a, once a person dies, that, that that's just a body. So it doesn't really matter what happens to it. I mean, there have been people that have died at sea, been eaten by sharks, burned up in houses. I mean, what's, what about their bodies? It doesn't really matter about the body. All right? The soul is what we're talking about, the eternal part of man. So, yeah, to answer your question, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about taking a body. Do with it whatever you want to. Okay. All right? All right. Thanks for your call. All right. A little off topic, but that's all right. So, out of your own mouth. See, friends, how dangerous it is? When people say something, they say something, and then it's going to come right back and haunt them. Jesus is going to say out of your own mouth, you said you had the Bible in this church that's not even in it. Why? Why? All right? Now, let's do another one here. Not. I do not believe that. I think uh, he's coming kind of hard on the Baptist because I'm Baptist. <laughs> but uh, um, I don't know uh, what he thinks about that. Uh, does it, I know that it doesn't say Baptist in the Bible. I know it doesn't say that. But uh, I just think he's coming down a little bit hard on that. I uh, don't know what he thinks. What would be your advice to help him? Maybe, maybe to differ with the Baptist, but do it in a way that would make. All right. Do you uh, feel so bad? Huh? What would be a way that Johnny could obviously he differs in and in, in, you, you probably differ in feelings on on the on the issues, but what could Johnny do to perhaps get that message across but not hurt your feelings? Uh, hmm, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just say it more calmly and not to be, raise your voice like you're kind of hyper a little bit. What if I am hyper? <laughs> well, if you're hyper, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> Maybe Johnny. All right, I know it doesn't say Baptist in the Bible. Just you know, if you're going if you're going to say Baptist not in the Bible, just don't yell when you say it. Really. Friends, do you hear what you're saying? You're saying, I know that the Baptist is not in the Bible. I know the Baptist church is not in the Bible. You're saying you know it's not in the Bible, but you're still saying, just don't be mean when you say it. Just don't be mean when you tell me that it's not in the Bible. Friends, I, just, I don't understand that. Out of your own mouth, you're saying these things. You don't, do you not hear yourself talking about it? That's one reason why... I think it's interesting to play some of these calls. Is to let people hear what they're saying so that it will resonate with them. You know, when we have when we have preachers on and we, we play back what they say, they don't like it. You know why? Because they then have to face the fact that they actually hearing their own their own self say these things. Their own mouth is judging them. Out of their own mouth, they say it. Now, friends, I just, I, I just don't understand people that say, well, I know it's not in the Bible, but you'll make me feel better if you just won't be, be so hyper and yell when you're saying it. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, so why you can't find um, the word uh, education in the Bible? And you got a lot of people going out here through these colleges, getting these degrees, and they come back playing the preacher. But then you got some people what you know the lower have really put a call on their life to go out there and serve and do what he what he his will. That was different than, than the way both teachings. You know what I'm saying? And you, but you got a lot of people go out there and get these degrees, and then they come out and see they, you know, 
that serve the Lord. I, I don't understand your question. I, I don't understand your question. I'll uh, say, did your degree or did Jesus put a call in your life for you to do what you're doing, you and Johnny? You know well, what I'm saying? Well, there's definitely, I mean, I don't know if you had to have a piece of paper, but I'm saying you definitely had to study. I mean, in Acts chapter 19, let's just look at this, in Acts chapter 19. Yeah, because, you know, don't it say now in the Bible somewhere where, where the, the creator will say, if you lack wisdom and understanding, he'll, he'll open up your door, understanding, you know, and give you what he wants you to have. It ain't saying that he's going to send you out there to college to get these degrees and all this. To qualify yourself, because uh, once he qualifies you, man have no, okay. you know, say right. so about it. Right. Well, my point is, study, study all studying God's word. All right. and all that. Okay, studying God's word is getting an education. I mean, here in Acts chapter nineteen, verse eight, and he went into the synagogue, come up, Paul, and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated disciples, uh, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus, and thus continued by the space of two years, uh, so that all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both uh, uh, word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greek. So. Here, here you have Paul teaching individuals now. You know, they didn't get a piece of paper that said, you know, you're a graduate and they didn't have the flat board and whatever. But the point is, when you're studying God's word, you're getting an education. And that's what's going to teach you. That's what's, that's what's giving you instruction, okay? All right, thanks for your call. Thanks for your call. Appreciate that. All right. All right. So again, back to your own word, friends. How is it that you feel... Secure, having having made the statement, well, I know that Baptist is not in the Bible, but I just don't like it when you raise your voice or say a little calmer when you when you tell me. Friends, I just don't know any, any other way to do it. It's like maybe we're trying to plead with you because the church you're in, and this is not just a Baptist church. There's all these man-made churches. If you can't find the Bible, friends, why would you want to be in it? Why would you sit there and admit? I know it's not in the Bible. I know it's not in the Bible. Do you not hear yourself? You know it's not in the Bible, but you're not going to you're not going to come out of it. That's scary. That's scary to me. All right, here's another one. Here's another one. Do you not hear yourself say this? But we would soon find ourselves together and in unity. You're on what I was saying. You're on what the Bible saying. I want to know in the Bible where you find that it says not to use musical instruments. When he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, he didn't say just sing a jo joy. joyful noise, did he? Ma'am, have you been watching our program all night? Yeah, I have, and getting mad up the minute. Well, let me ask you this. Are you, can I ask you, and you be honest with me, are you a Baptist? Absolutely, I'm a Baptist. All right, now now watch what I'm going to do, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying to be kind. I just want us to reason together, okay? I don't want you to be mad at me. I just want us to reason, okay? I don't want to reason. I just want you to answer well, my question. Well, you're right. You don't want to reason. All right, my, my answer to your question is, if you're a Baptist, then you recognize that there's nowhere in the Bible that it says not to sprinkle. But would you affirm that sprinkling is okay? No, but... Wait, wait, he, wait, wait, ma'am. You just killed yourself right there. Oh, shut up. He, he said that he would... The did you hear that? Ma'am, people in Henry County, did you hear that lady tell me to shut up? What he did in the Bible, we follow, and he was baptized. All right, ma'am. What they what did... Sprinkled. Okay, now watch this. Here's the same argument that you just used. I'm going to use it again. What they did in praise in the New Testament is what we do today. Did they use mechanical instruments in praise? We don't use mechanical instruments to pray. To praise, I said. Praise. P-R-A-I-S-E. Well, it says praise the Lord. In the New Testament. And make a joy for no In the New Testament. I don't know about the New Testament. Well, I... then what are you talking about? Do you do what David did? Do you offer uh, animal sacrifices? I... I... 
I believe all the Bible, so, not just here, young and there. So, are you uh, building an ark then? The ark has already been built. Well, the Bible said to build an ark. The Bible says to offer sacrifices of sheep. Are you doing that? You are just impossible to talk to. Thank all right, you. thank you. Now, friends, I know that many of you... All right, now here, here's some, some thoughts about this caller. You know, it doesn't say not to. That, that's the first one. Everybody says, eh, it doesn't say not to. Friends, you realize how big the Bible would be if God had to put everything that you're not supposed to do in it? Why, why can't we get past that? Why can't we get past the fact that God does not authorize by what he does not say? In other words, what is authorized is based upon what God does say. What God does not say, then, has to be tempered or, 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 or uh, uh, what conditioned by what he did say. In other words, if God said, sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord, then you know what he did not say. He didn't have to say, don't use the piano, don't use the guitar, don't use the psaltery, don't use the harpsichord, don't use whatever. He told you what he wanted. And we understand that. And the lady says, well, he didn't say not to. He didn't say not to. Friends, he didn't say not to use peanut butter and jelly on the Lord's Supper. But we know that when it comes to the Lord's Supper, that we're using the unleavened bread and the unleavened fruit of the vine. Why? Because that's what they used. That was the example. And therefore, everything else is ruled out. Now then, I, I thought it was interesting that later on, as, the, as, as went on, the caller said, we don't use mechanical instruments to pray, and, and Johnny said praise, in the New Testament. She says, what well, I don't know about the New Testament. Out of your own mouth. Out of your own mouth, you're saying, you don't know about the New Testament, but yet you're going to turn around and insist that what you're doing is okay. Even though you say, I don't know about the New Testament. You don't know about the rules, but yet you're going to turn around and say, well, it's, it's got to be okay because he didn't say not to. How do you know he didn't say not to? You don't know about the New Testament. See, out of your own mouth, you're proving that you really don't know about the Bible. If someone says, well, he doesn't say not to, but I haven't, I haven't read the, the second half of the book, well, maybe you ought to read the second half of the book before you come to the conclusion about what he did or did not say. You're on the word of the Lord. You're on the word of the Lord. Turn your TV down, please. Hello? Hello? You're on the air. Uh, James? Yeah. You there? I'm here. All right, I think we got a. I think we got a bad. That must be a bad line right there. That's when I'm. Call back. Call back, and I'll try to take another line. Uh, you see what I'm saying, friends? So here's the lady. She goes, "Well, I haven't read it all." Now, why would you admit that? And then turn around and argue about what the Bible does say or not? I haven't read it all. And then says, well, we use the whole Bible. Well, how do we know you use the whole Bible? You said you didn't know about the New Testament. I don't know about the New Testament. I use the whole Bible. Well, apparently you don't use the whole Bible because you don't know about the New Testament. Out of your own mouth, friends, when you say you follow the Bible, and when you say you know that God is pleased with what you do, and when you say, well, you know that what you're doing is acceptable to God, and then you can't show it in the Bible, you know what that tells me? That tells me you're lying. You're lying to yourself. And when you say, well, my preacher preaches right out of the Bible, but you can't show what the preacher said is in the Bible, you're lying to yourself. You're fooling yourself. How about taking notes? How about taking notes? Preachers up there preaching out of the Bible? Hey, take notes. Take notes on it. You want to word from the Lord? James. Yeah. Uh, is there anywhere in the Bible where it speaks of Jesus, Jesus of a hugging anybody? I don't know. He took he 
they brought the children to his midst. Uh, I'm I don't, off the top of my head. I don't know. I'm sure he embraced somebody. Why? Well, I was just wondering. I've never heard anybody speak of it. I've never read it. I was just, just well, wondering. Is there a? I mean, there's got to be a reason why you're asking that. That's kind of a specific question. Well, I've I've not heard anybody speak of it or where it was at. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a uh, I'm, I'm good answer I can give you, but uh, well, I figured uh, if anybody knew, you guys would know. Right. I don't. Know, I just seem kind of. I just seem kind of random. I guess. Is like. Is like. Is that a question that came up in Bible class or something? No, it's nice to get a hug from somebody, don't you think? Uh, it depends on who the person is, I guess. <laughs> maybe some, maybe somebody who loves you or likes you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just, I don't. I, off the top of my head, I don't know. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I, I, he might have got a kid. He might have got a hug from Judas when he, when he kissed him. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to look at that one. I don't know. But right. I know I know that I know that All Paul right. I know that Paul embraced uh, uh, individuals. Acts twenty, there it is. Acts twenty, verse one. And after the upper over ceased, Paul called unto him all the disciples and embraced them and departed to go into Macedonia. So he he hugged his brethren there. Paul did. So I can't find Jesus, but I found Paul. Did that help you? All right. All right. All right, thank you. All right. So, uh, I don't know. That's, um, uh, that, that's a good trivia question, I guess. So, out of your own mouth, friends. That's what we're talking about. Dangerous. Dangerous to say we don't use the whole Bible. I know the whole Bible. Don't use the whole Bible. I know that what I'm doing is in accordance with God's will, even though I don't know the Bible. That out of your own mouth, you're saying it. You don't know the Bible. All right. Here's another one. Here's another one. Well, I, you know, I, I, I would be lying to you if, if you know, it, it, maybe I don't understand what what you're saying, but. I, you know, I'm just, I'm not convinced that, that what you're teaching about the Holy Spirit is true. Okay. And if I said I did, I'd be lying. Right. But, but there, there is a possibility that you're, um, you know, I just don't understand what you're saying and it's not sinking in. Okay. I don't think that's the case. But well, the, the point I'm trying to make is that a lot of stuff that you're, I think you all teach, you know, uh, of course, you know, you're teaching stuff about baptism and salvation, and you know, for the remission of sin, baptism for the remission of sin, and, and being baptized into Christ, that's perfectly fine. The, you know, the lost need to hear that. But uh, a lot of the stuff I think that you all try to teach doesn't, you know, they're not in Christ, so they're not going to be able to understand what you're teaching, and, and, and it's not going to do them any good anyway, because if they're not in Christ, then they're not going to be able to understand what you're teaching or apply it well, to their lives. And I think that's what that verse is saying, is you all okay. teach a lot of stuff. Well, that's just that's, passing your that's, pearls before swine. Okay. Well, that, all right. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but earlier in the call, the man said, he didn't understand what I was saying. And then he started chastising about some of the things we teach because people don't understand it because they're not in the church. If you're not, and he says, they don't understand because they're not in, those that don't understand are not in Christ. Well, he must not have been in Christ. See what I'm saying? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that curious? That a person says, well, if you're not in Christ, you're not going to understand these things. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I don't understand it. Okay, you're not in Christ. Now, he would say he was in Christ, but he didn't understand what I was saying. And um, this same caller is the one that calls, had called him before and was talking about the, the Holy Spirit, said he had a discerning of spirits, and, uh, but yet he couldn't prove that either. So I don't know that he really understands. You're on the word from the Lord. Uh, I've got a question. Do a preacher 
supposed to get paid to preach the word, or should they get a love offering? The the you know what I'm saying? Well, if if he's what what uh, let me ask you this: What denomination are you talking about? What church are you in? Any denomination. Well, I mean, if if. If uh, if I was in a church that wasn't in the Bible, I wouldn't give the preacher a dime. If he if he wasn't if he wasn't telling me what the Bible says, and if he can't find the church that he's in in the Bible, I wouldn't give him a thin dime. I wouldn't give him a penny. You know. Ooh, I, ooh, I know there's a lot of preachers. But, right but to answer your question, but to answer your question, I'm just saying, the Bible does say that a preacher can be paid. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he said that uh, he said that he has the right to to be paid. In other words, he's working. He's working. Uh, <clears throat> let's come on down here. He says, have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife as well as other apostles uh, as brethren of the Lord and, and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas have not we power to forbear working. In other words, Paul was a tent maker. Acts chapter 19, he was a tent maker. But he says, I have the power, I have the right not to work. Because look at this, who goes to war of his own charges? Who, who pays for his own way to go to war? Who plants a vineyard and doesn't eat of it? And who feeds the flock and doesn't eat of it? And he said, I say these things as a man. Or saith also the law. The law says the same thing. Don't muzzle the ox that treads the corn. So, if he's preaching and he's teaching of the gospel, Paul says, I have the right to reap of your carnal things. If I'm sowing to you spiritual things, I have right to reap carnal things. So, he had the right, he had the power, he had the authority to be paid or to have his income supplied or his livelihood supplied so that he could preach. So yes, it's biblical to pay the preacher, but I'm going to say this. The first thing I do is ask the preacher, show me the, this church in the Bible. Show me the Pentecostal Holiness Church in the Bible. Show me the Apostolic Church in the Bible. Show me the uh, the Baptist Church in the Bible. If he can't do it, I'm not going to give him one dime. See, because he don't really he doesn't really care about you. So that that's the that's the long and short of that. Listen, I, 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 I'm, I'm running. I'm really running out of time. I want to get this last point. We were talking about one day, and I said, well, I can't see where. Jesus Christ walked around this world and he got paid. Well, the Bible says there are women. Watch that, your man period, you paid. Right. Well, the Bible says there was women. I don't mind giving up a love offering. Okay. Well, the Bible says there was there was women that, that followed after Jesus and, and ministering to them, supplied their needs. So he was being cared for in that regard. So, okay. All right. Now, uh, so if you don't understand, friends, let me get back to my lesson here. So if you don't understand, don't be saying that those outside the body of Christ can't understand and then turn around and say, you don't understand. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Out of your own mouth. Out of your own mouth. All right, let me get one more here. One more. By the way, I need to tell you, I, I believe in baptism. Um, I very much. I'm a, I'm a person that baptizes. Uh, we don't have a disagreement on that except for whether it's it's a testimony or whether it's the act of then, salvation itself. Then, that, but, we disagree on that. But, but, that's, that, but that's then we don't agree. In the essentials. I, no, I no. don't think. Well, what, what is essential? Is, is, is uh, the Godhead, is that essential? Most definitely. Faith okay. in Christ. Most definitely. Grace. Right. So, so do you believe? Uh, do you, I believe baptism most definitely. Uh, but, I think but here's the thing. a lot of things. Are but here's the thing. All right, let, let's take baptism for example. For example, do you immerse when you baptize. You immerse, or what? What do you believe about baptism? I believe immersion is is the right thing, but I I would not tell some elderly lady that that was sprinkled on her deathbed that she was going to hell, I wouldn't do that. You, you I, wouldn't I tell couldn't. her that the, that the Lord said you had to be immersed? See, that, that's what I'm saying. You can't you can't agree with the Methodist then. How, how can you be in the same body as a Methodist? If you're saying you must be immersed, but then you wouldn't tell someone 
that they have to be immersed if that's what the Bible says. If you really believe that that's what the Bible said, that you must be immersed, why would you not tell someone what the Bible says? See, the difference between us, sir, is I believe it so firmly, I'm going to tell you. You don't believe it because you won't tell somebody. James, I will. I will. No, you won't. You just said you wouldn't do it. No, I, I wouldn't tell her she's going to hell. Why wouldn't you tell her? If you believed, if you firmly believed that you had to be immersed because the Lord commanded it, would you tell her she had to be immersed? That's a very difficult question. I don't think I would. I think I would, right. I would say that I can immerse you very well with sprinkling. How are you going to immerse somebody with sprinkling? Well, you can make them very wet. <laughs> but very wet is not immersed. All right, so there goes, friends. The man says, I really believe, I firmly believe in baptism is immersion, but I'm not going to tell you. Well, he doesn't believe it. Out of his own mouth. Out of his own mouth. You're on the word of the Lord. you got 30 seconds. Go. Yes, I had a question for you. All right, got to be really uh, you quick. You made reference to a church. Uh, you wouldn't pay ties to a church that's not in the Bible. And my question for you is exactly what church uh, are you giving reference to? Or is it your church that no, is the I, only church name in the Bible? Yeah. And where is the scriptural finding for this in the Bible according with the King James? All right. Presuming that's what you're holding in your hand. Right, that is. Uh, I don't have a church. I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Paul said, the churches of Christ salute you. So we're talking about the church that Christ died for in Matthew chapter 16. Just wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. I, 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 I'm running out of time. Do you want me to answer your question? Do you want me to answer your question? Because I'm running out of time. Matthew, Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said, uh, Upon this rock I'll build my church. So whose church does it belong to? Whose church is it? Well, it's the church of Christ. Okay. The, uh, Christ is the foundation of the gospel and his teaching. Okay. Alright, so the church I'm in belongs to Christ. So it's the church of Christ. That's the church I'm talking about. All these man-made churches, you can't find them in the Bible, and therefore that's why I'm saying that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them a dime because they'd be lying to me. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I, I've got to. I've got to sign off, but I'll be glad to talk to you off the air. Is that all right? You stay on hold. Oh, most definitely. Okay. All right. Hang on. I'll. I'll come back to you. All right, friends. Uh, out of out of time. I'm actually a little bit long, so I apologize for that, Matt. But uh, we do want to remind you of our uh, contact information, and if you are. Visiting, you want to study with us? Here's how you can reach me: two seven six three four zero two six five three. Word from the Lord at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Make sure that what you're saying is not going to get you in trouble on the day of judgment. Always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.